Welcome to Electron Online. Now we're going to tackle the general solution of a second order partial differential equation. Now later on we're going to show you specific solutions for specific equations, but here we want to show you the general approach because the general approach will give us a solution that is able to be used by all the other equations. So again, we start with our second order partial differential equation, which we'll probably never actually use because it's such a complicated equation. And we already realized that we're going to simplify things by letting d, e, and f go to zero. And by letting a, b, and c be constants. And in this case, we're going to let the right side, r of x and y, go to zero as well. So we end up with this very simplistic form of the second order partial differential equation. Now that shouldn't bother us because as we saw in the previous video, there's quite a number of very useful equations that fall in that, in that type of category. So it's not a stretch at all. So now what we're going to say here is that we're going to look for a solution for you in our partial differential equation of the form f of p, where p itself is a function of x and y. So we showed you how to do that in some earlier videos. And so it actually simplifies things. So we're going to actually find the solution in terms of, of a function of x and y rather than you being a, a function of x and y. All right, in that case, we're going to also uh, simplify things by letting p be a linear function of x and y. So not only are we looking for a solution in terms of the function of p, which is a function of x and y, we're also going to assume that p of a function of x and y is actually a linear function where x and y are, are raised to the first power only, so that our function will look something like this, ax plus by. Then we write this. We can say that the partial of u with respect to x can be written as a derivative with respect to p of that function of p, which is a function of x and y, times the partial derivative of p with respect to x. And so since p is a linear function, because we're going to assume that we're going to look for a linear function, and the reason we can assume that is because we already know ahead of time that it actually is a linear function of x and y. So this is not just a wild guess, we actually already know ahead of time that the, the solution to this partial differential equation will be a linear function of, of x and y. So we're just going to simplify the job by already knowing it's going to turn into that, that type of function. And so we don't have to use a more general case, which is a much more difficult. So if you wonder why we said, hey, let's make p a linear function of x and y, you might say, how do you know that? Why can you say that? So we kind of looked ahead and said, okay, we know that that's a solution, so let's just make it easier for ourselves. That's all we're doing. But as a result, then we know that if we take the partial derivative of p with respect to x, that will be a constant, and the partial b with respect to y will also be a constant. And then if we take the second partial derivative of p with respect to x, that will be zero, and the second partial derivative of p with respect to y, that will be zero as well. So again, that's why things are simplified. So now we can realize then that p will be ax plus by. So it's a linear function of x and y. a and b are constants. These are small a and b. These are not the same as these a and b's. And so that's just a general form of a linear equation. And so we put in that form. And then we know that u will be a function of that function. So the function of ax plus by could be ax plus by squared or a, ax plus by to the third power, to the one half power, whatever it is. So that's how we want to look at the answer. So then we can say that the partial of u respect to x can be written as this, because instead of writing as a partial of p respect to x, we now know that, this, that it's a constant, and in this case the constant will be a, and if we take the partial of u respect to y, we know that the constant is going to be b times the ddp of the function of p. And then if we take the second derivative of u respect to x and the second derivative of u respect to y and the second derivative of u respect to x and y, then we get these equations a squared times the second derivative of the function with respect to p, the second derivative of the function with respect to p, and again the second derivative of the function with respect to b. The only difference is we have an a squared here, a b squared here, and a times b. And then if we take this form of the equation and then we realize that we can make the substitution for this, for this, and for this, right, so these are the three terms, we're going to make a substitution for those three terms, we can then factor out a common d squared dp of the function of p, so now we see that we have the same common factor here, we have an a plus b plus c, 
and then the a is multiplied by a squared, the b is multiplied by a b, and the c is multiplied by b squared, and so now we have a reduced form of that simplified equation, which we can now actually solve, because now we know that this times this equals zero, which means this is equal to zero, or this is equal to zero. Of course, if this is equal to zero, then we don't have a good function, then that's the very basic general solution that we don't have a solution. But if this is equal to zero, we now see that we can solve this using a quadratic equation, which then gives us the possibility of those three solutions that we talked about before, the hyperbolic solution, the parabolic solution, or the elliptical solution, because this obviously looks like a simple quadratic equation, set equal to zero, we can solve that using algebraic methods to solve a, a quadratic equation, and then we'll get the general form of the solution in this form right here. In other words, we're going to find the value for a and b, and that will then give us a solution for p, which then gives us a solution for u. So that's the general approach that we're taking. And in the, since I'm running out of board space, it will be part two, where we'll finish this job, and we'll actually give you a general form of the solution of this form of the partial differential equation, second order partial differential equation of this. And that's how it's done.